David Grau and I invented this particular broad fork and I want to show you how to put the handles on it and show you a couple things about it. Okay, you got your broad fork out of the box. You grab it and turn it over so that the tines are facing up and then you put it on the edge of the workbench like that. And it will stay there until you add the handles. Then I'm going to take a handle and insert it in the socket and you see the, the holes here, there's two holes. This upper hole should line up with the hole in the socket. You insert the handle lining up these holes with that hole approximately. Push it in. This one, the sockets can vary slightly in size. It's the amount of paint on the socket mainly. And you get that just lined up with a hole, just like that. Now, you may have to, there we go, and this nut, this is a nyloc nut, it's got a nyloc insert. The nylock insert acts like a lock washer, so when you tighten this nut it won't loosen up later in the field. I'm just going to get the nut threaded on here, I'll tighten it in a minute. Okay, now the, the uh, balance has changed, so I have to hold on to the handle while I do the other one. I'll just hold on to that. Line up the holes with the hole in the socket here, like this, and then I'm going to push it in. And then that one's only going in that far, and now I need to grab a rubber mallet. I'm going to take this mallet, and tap in the handle. is not lined up yet. So I'm going to twist the handle just a little bit. If you have to, you can pound it back out with a dowel and put it in again to get it just right. Okay, let's try that. It's not completely lined up, but it's wood, so you can just get it started like that and just tap it in. I want to tell you a couple things about the broad fork. One is that we turn these handles on the lathe so that they're exactly the right size to fit in these sockets. And that's a little tricky because wood shrinks and swells with atmospheric moisture. So we turn them, we wait a few days, we dip them in linseed oil to keep more moisture in the air out. So we try to stabilize it, but sometimes the handle will be a little too tight. Then you take a piece of sandpaper like this and you can actually wrap it around the handle like that. And either go this way or this way. You won't have to do very much and the handle will fit. So if it's a little bit tight, I hope you appreciate that what we're trying to end up with is a handle that's tight in the socket that you can assemble at home because you don't want the, sock, the handle to wobble around in that socket. So once in a while you have one, oh this is too hard to get in hitting with a mallet. Well don't force it, just take the sandpaper, sand a little bit off and it'll fit in just fine. The second thing I want to tell you is that when we built the broad fork I bought a, another broad fork from another company and I said I think there's a few things we can do to improve broad forks. So what I did, first of all, was I said, you know, the weak point of a broad fork is that these tines can bend. Particularly, it's, many of the broad forks out there are not tempered steel. This is cold rolled steel, it's not tempered also. Um, so if you have a steel like this, you need to somehow reinforce it so that it doesn't bend because if 
if the tines bend and they're like this, instead of all being in the same line, if, if one of them's off and you try to shove it in the ground, it's going to resist and you have a tool that really doesn't work very well. So that's what the gusset is for and we welded it in three places here on each side and we also made a special notch out here so it's got really good adherence to the tread bar. We made the tread bar nice and thick. All this is to make a really stiff tine that will keep its alignment. You want them all to be right in the same alignment. The next thing we did was we tapered these points on the lathe. Instead of having them just cut off or blunt or something, it gives you the easiest insertion into the dirt. So that and the wooden handles, which are more trouble than just welding on a steel handle, but I like the feel of wood. I think a lot of our customers do also. It, it's easier on you when the weather's hot, it doesn't get hot. When the weather's cold, it doesn't get cold. And it flexes a little bit so that I think it makes the, the feel of the tool a lot easier. So you can actually flex the handle a little bit like that and realize that uh, it's sort of like it's alive. Um, and when you, when you use the broad fork, use both hands. Don't do all the weight with one hand because the handles are the weak point and you want, they're strong, but you don't want to uh, break the handle. If you do in the first six months, they're guaranteed. But uh, after that, you're on your own. You can buy new handles from us if you need to. Um, but I think you'll appreciate the wooden handle. I, I certainly do. So there you have it, the assembled broad fork, ready to take out into the garden and work with. Enjoy your broad fork.